Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking yet another look at some awesome new updates to Yuzu Emulator, including a brand new Patreon release and Patreon post released by the developers in the past few days. On top of all of this, we're also going to be taking a fresh look at game compatibility, including some brand new releases for the Switch, and also taking a look at some graphical upgrades and optimizations, especially so some very important ones that are going to make AMD GPU users very, very happy. Before we take a look at any of that stuff though, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Patreon post which was released by the Yuzu team only two days ago. This new service is called BoxCat, and to explain exactly what it is, I'm going to take some excerpts from a brand new forum post which was just published on the Yuzu website. Today we bring to you another exciting Nintendo Switch feature, BoxCat, which will create opportunities for new in-game content across various games. The Nintendo Switch has a network service called BCAT, using which games can add new content dynamically, basically meaning that any game title which supports this service can add new content without having to update the game itself. Nintendo can push new content to various games via this service. Some examples of this content we have been given are new course rotations in Splatoon 2, new costumes in Super Mario Odyssey, and new updates and news reports on the home menu of the Nintendo Switch itself. Thanks to the efforts of Yuzu developer Dark Lord Zack, they now have an open source replacement for this service in Yuzu. By emulating the BCAT service at the high level, Yuzu is now able to intercept the game's call to this Nintendo server and reroute them to Yuzu's servers. This means that games running on Yuzu will now check for new content on Yuzu servers instead of Nintendo's. This allows the creators of Yuzu Emulator to add new content for many games that use this service, and indeed as an example in this Patreon release, they have used this BCAT service in order to deliver new contents for games like Super Mario Odyssey, Splatoon 2, and even The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. In order to attain these contents, you're going to need Super Mario Odyssey updated to at least version 1.2.0, Breath of the Wild updated to 1.1.0 and Splatoon 2 updated to 3.2.0 versions. And yes, you did hear me correctly, thanks to this new BoxCat update, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild now fully supports all of its game updates and DLCs. And of course, due to this new BCAT services system, this is going to mean that potentially in future, users are going to be able to inject their own contents into their own specific games. They've told us that they are going to be testing this feature in this new Patreon build, and as per usual, it will more than likely be available in Yuzu Canary in the very, very near future. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at all of those changes in this new Yuzu Patreon build, let's swap back over to the latest Canary builds of Yuzu Emulator and see what has changed in relation to game compatibility, graphical updates, and new optimizations, especially so, as I said, for AMD GPU users. First up, we're going to be covering that news in relation to AMD GPUs, and yes, for games like Pokemon Let's Go, Super Mario Odyssey, and pretty much any other game that was missing fonts rendering, this is now 100% fixed thanks to new changes in the very latest Yuzu Canary version. While graphical output and these rendered fonts has been greatly improved, there are still quite a few graphical issues and rendering problems when using AMD GPUs on the Windows operating system. On top of these rendering issues, there are also some quite severe performance issues, especially so prevalent in the game we're looking at right now a Pokemon Let's Go and also in a Super Mario Odyssey. However, there is some light at the end of the tunnel and while the developers of Yuzu Emulator are working tirelessly on these AMD GPU issues on the Windows operating system, if you are looking for the best possible place to play games like Pokemon Let's Go and others on your PC, by far the best place to do so is on the Linux operating system and if you're looking for an easy to follow setup guide for Linux, you'll find my complete guide linked down in this video's description. All you have to do is follow that guide along and it will show you step by step exactly what you need to do. As you can see in the screenshots provided, Linux performs at least two times better than the Windows operating system with my RX 580, and on top of this added performance, the game is also rendered much, much better over there. And again, regardless of these performance issues and graphical output issues on the Windows operating system, thanks to these new font fixes, many, many games are now fully playable when using AMD GPUs and Yuzu Emulator. Hopefully in future we'll see even more graphical evolutions for AMD GPU users on Yuzu, but for now, let's move on to some game compatibility and take a look at some improvements in the last few weeks on Yuzu Canary. 
First up, we have LA Noir, which is now not only a booting, but is also a rendering graphics in-game. Now, don't get too excited about the performance levels you're seeing on screen. What you're currently watching is a pre-rendered video, and when we actually jump forward into some actual in-game gameplay, you can see that while it, yes, is rendered very, very well, it's not very playable since it's basically a 5 or 6 frames per second slideshow. Regardless, it's still really, really cool to see a game that's as demanding as this is on the Nintendo Switch which booting and rendering as well as it is on a Yuzu. Next up, we're going to take a look at a game that has only just started booting. Let's take a look at Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. With this game, we have one of the rare 64-bit titles which was ported over from the Nintendo Wii U, and while this game is, yes, booting and does actually get to its initial title screen, but unfortunately, once it gets to the title screen, it's just going to freeze or softlock, and while some Yuzu developers have posted screenshots of this game going in-game, it is still unfortunately not playable on the latest publicly available Yuzu builds. Swiftly moving on, once again, let's take a look at our next game for compatibility, which is not only booting, but is also semi-playable now on Yuzu. Let's take a look at Gear Club Unlimited. Again, thanks to optimizations in this emulator in the past few weeks, Gear Club Unlimited is now considered playable, or at least semi-playable on Yuzu. It is also rendered almost perfectly with only some small rendering issues in relation to water and some of these skyboxes at night time. I was super, super surprised with how well this game not only performed, but rendered when I booted it for the very first time, and again, hopefully this title is going to see even more improvements, making it perform and render even better in future. City Skylines for the Nintendo Switch is our next title, and while it is now going in-game and rendering 3D graphics, it can in no way be considered playable due to the fact that not all fixtures or constructed objects perfectly render in-game. Performance-wise, it runs quite well, especially so after you've cast your shaders running at an almost locked 30 frames per second when using the Force 30 frames per second mode in the graphics tab, but as I said, due to these rendering issues, this game cannot be considered in any way playable. Next up, we have Fire Emblem Warriors, and very similarly to Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, this game is also now booting, gets to its title menu, but unfortunately crashes or softlocks as soon as it gets there. Unlike Donkey Kong, this game performs very very poorly, especially so when trying to load into said title menu, so hopefully this can be further improved in future. Next up, we have Dead Cells, and thanks to recent optimizations, this game is now not only booting but also goes in-game and is very playable. Unfortunately, even though running at very good performance levels, the sound or audio quality in this game is very very poor. Have a quick listen to see exactly what I'm talking about. Hopefully this and many of the other audio issues on Yuzu Emulator can be remedied in future. For now, let's move on to our next title, One Piece Pirate Warriors 3. Funnily enough, this game is actually suffering with a very similar graphical output issue as One Piece Unlimited World Red did when it booted on Yuzu Emulator for the very first time. Performance-wise, it runs great, staying locked to 30 frames per second at almost all times after having cached your initial shaders. Again, once they fix all of these weird wonky graphics with the backgrounds and stages, this game, as with One Piece Unlimited World Red, should be considered fully playable. Next up, we have Resident Evil 4, and even though this game only released, I think, three days ago at time of making this video, it now at least boots and gets to its initial title screen. Upon loading into a brand new game, you are going to be met with this. 1998. I'll never forget it. It was the year when those grisly murders occurred in the Arklay Mountains. Unfortunately, in this game, as with many others on Yuzu Emulator, it requires NVDEC video encoding, and since that is not currently implemented in Yuzu, we are not going to get any rendered cutscenes for this game. Again, unfortunately, after this cutscene plays out, the game pretty much drops off to 0 frames per second, doesn't go in-game, and doesn't render any graphics. However, moving on to our next title, Train 2 is now basically perfectly rendered and also runs at a perfectly locked 30 frames per second at all times now on Yuzu. You can even play this game at 60 frames per second, however, if you intend to play it in multiplayer modes, you are by far better off to use the Force 30 FPS mode in the graphics tab and play it at a locked 30 at all times. Next up, we have Attack on Titan 2, where again, thanks to recent graphical optimizations, this game is now running and rendering much better on Yuzu. Yuzu. Again, as with some of the other titles we've covered in this compatibility video, this game's audio is pretty bad. Have a quick listen and you'll hear exactly what I'm talking about.
Moving on to our second last game for this compatibility video, Puyo Puyo Champions is now considered fully playable on Yuzu. Obviously not the best looking or most demanding game on the emulator, but I still think it's really cool to see games like this getting released and being pretty much immediately playable on Yuzu. Okay, let's move on to our final game for this compatibility showcase. Rayman Legends is now not only booting, but is also semi-playable on Yuzu. I say semi-playable because as with Attack on Titan 2 and Dead Cells, this game also has fairly severe audio issues on Yuzu, and until those are completely fixed, this game, at least in my eyes, cannot be considered fully playable. If there are any games that you would like to see tested in future compatibility reports for Yuzu Emulator, please do not hesitate to leave a comment down below or indeed ask over on my Discord server if you are having any issues with Yuzu Emulator itself. In the next day or so, I am also going to be releasing my new full setup guide that's going to show you all of the best settings for all of your favourite games on this awesome Nintendo Switch emulator, so keep your eyes out for that on the channel. Again, at the end of this video, I want to give a massive thank you to all of the Patreon supporters of BSOD Gaming. If you yourself want to help with the day-to-day -day running of the channel, please consider heading to the Patreon link in this video's description and pledging or donating to help to support the channel. As I always say, pledges and donations are 100% not required for any help from me either in my videos or over on my Discord, but it really, really does help with the day-to-day -day running of the channel, so if you do choose to donate or support, thank you very, very much. Once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, as always remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.